Alright everybody, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to delve back into the world of Vince McMahon and the XFL. The XFL have just released a, a brand new press conference, I do believe, talking about everything. It's about 30 to 35 minutes long and a couple of you guys have recommended it to me. It's a video I saw pop up in my newsfeed, but I thought I'll wait. I'll wait until I've got the camera to then watch it with you guys. That's exactly what we're going to do. So I'll see you back here in just a minute. The quicker you're here, the faster you go. That's why where I come from, the only thing we know is... Okay, now a bit about me. If you haven't met me before, here we go. XFL introduction. Safer, this is football, reborn, this is... I mean, the way I look at it, the way, you know, the reason why a few of you guys have recommended me check out the XFL is because you feel like that could be a possible route for, for me to get into professional football. You know, being that I, I hadn't actually played yet, and um, I believe you. In fact, I agree. Especially for the fact that this doesn't start until 2020. We're at the end of 2018 right now, you know. Also the fact that they focus on fan engagement, they focus on personalities of players, you know, it's not, I don't know if they're going to even be able to have NFL players in there, so all the players that play in this league can't play in the NFL, so it's like, just got a whole new mix of players, you know, it's, it's exciting, it's exciting for me as, as a fan, um, but I'm not going to lie, it's exciting for me as, a, as an athlete as well, you know, it, it is. I'm not going to lie, I'm not going to make any claims, okay, I'm not going to say shit, I'm not going to make a video about whether I think I can make the XFL because, you know, we know what's going to happen if I do that. So, I'm going to sit back, be quietly confident in my own ability, which I always have been, and we're just going to watch this and take it in and learn exactly how they're going to structure it and what's happening. Because I think, I'm pretty sure they've actually chosen teams, but I'm not sure, so let's get into it. Make a move, make a bet. This is fans above all. This is maximum action. Let's go. More ball, fewer infractions. This begins in 2020. The future is near. More access, more everyone, more everything. Yeah. This is our moment, our story to tell. This is history begun. This is the XFL. What the fuck was that? <laughs> no, seriously, man. What? 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 Ladies and gentlemen. Yes, this is what we want. The stage is set. Come on, Vince. Show me what you got. Please welcome the governor of New Jersey, Philip Murphy. Oh, sorry, Philip. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to MetLife Stadium and the iconic New Jersey Meadowlands. Thank you very much. I can only echo John's sentiment about President Bush, an American hero. God rest his soul. Uh, he is in our thoughts, our hearts, and our prayers on this national day of mourning and on every day. To Vince McMahon, to Commissioner, my old friend Oliver Luck, to John Sabor, the entire XFL team, the representatives from the communities, of the XFL, New Jersey is thrilled uh, to welcome you. We've got some elected officials, Senator and Mayor Paul Sarlo from New Jersey right here in this backyard, the Mayor of Arlington, Texas, Commissioner from Hillsborough County, to everybody, including New Jersey's and MetLife's own Ron Van Deveen. Again, we're thrilled to have you. This stadium is one of our nation's finest venues for sports and entertainment. It is hosted Bruce Springsteen, Bon Jovi, and Beyonce, and many others. It's hosted a Super Bowl, and I might add, at a personal level, a gubernatorial inaugural ball. It is home to two other football teams, and truth be told, it's got room for a third. New Jersey couldn't be happier to be one of the eight host sites for the XFL's 2020 revival season. It's not just what happens on the field that matters here. It's the jobs of the hundreds of game day employees. It's the economic impact of tens of thousands of fans coming to the Meadowlands. The return of the XFL will be a welcome addition for the many families across the Meadowlands region 
who rely upon this stadium to stay strong. The WWE brand has been a marquee name in many American households for decades. It is a brand that has touched millions, He's happy, isn't he? <laughs> millions of fans across generations and all over the world. See, th and this is the governor of New Jersey, right? Speaking so positively about this. I'm expecting it to be a one year wonder, just like it was back in 2000. You can go away. And uh, I'm expecting it to be like a one year wonder, just like it was in 2000. You know, it's going to be a flash in the pan. It's not going to work. And it's going to go away. But with, you know, I, I don't know. Do we take it seriously? Of course, it's happening. The first season's happening. But who knows, you know, if people are going to be able to handle another full season of football to watch? Or are they crying out for it? Why are they using a stadium that's already got two home teams? Surely they'd go to places that didn't have an NFL team, but maybe not. Constantly innovated, never forgetting its roots, yet forging forever forward. And indeed, we are thrilled to be hosting on April 7th, 2019, and 124 short days, WrestleMania right here at MetLife in the Meadowlands. And with the visionary leadership behind that brand comes the revival of the XFL, with a focus on providing the best on-field product that our nation's athletic talent can provide. I've said numerous times that I want New Jersey to become the home of innovative businesses. We have unparalleled access to the world's leading media market, and let's not forget some of the best football players hail from the Garden State. I think the XFL has everything it needs right here. When the XFL kicks off in 2020, MetLife will be ready, and New Jersey will be ready. And with that, it is my distinct pleasure, you don't get to do this every day, to introduce the one, the only, the singular, ladies and gentlemen, Vince McMahon. Morning. I'd like to thank the uh, governor. Well, as, uh, the executives here at the MetLife Stadium hosting our XFL president. What a legend he is. I'd like to thank, especially thank the eight representatives, uh, eight city representatives, as well as uh, the venues that are here. They're going to be our partners uh, in the inaugural season of XFL. Also, I see many business partners that are here. Thank you very much, especially uh, thank you and welcome to the members of the, of the media that are here today. It's ironic that uh, we were about 20 years. Sorry, guys. Hold on. Exactly 20 years ago when we announced the original XFL. Uh, and uh, a lot has changed since then. Uh, this was, of course, what did we know? We were 20 years ahead of our time. Um, uh, in addition to that, though, uh, there's uh, so many things that have changed. Um, some have not, but those who have changed, obviously, is, uh, as far as WV is concerned, as far as me personally, whatever is concerned, there's a, a financial commitment for the long term uh, for the XFL. Uh, there is also many differences as it relates to distributors. See, I, I just think, how does this guy have the stamina at his age to like put so much effort into this thing and see it through? Like, he's like 70, right? But, man, what he's doing for the game is amazing. Like, at that age, you know, you'd think you'd just sail off into the sunset, forget about everything, fucking retire, relax. But he ain't doing that. It's kind of like Donald Trump. You know, regardless of how you feel about him, he's fucking 70. And he's running a... He's, he's, he's you know, he's... What if he had a heart attack, you know? What if it's too much stress and he has a heart attack and dies? It's like... <laughs> I don't even know where I'm going with this. I'm just, I'm impressed. At the end of the day, I'm impressed with Vince McMahon at his age to be, you know, so committed to something like this and just putting his, putting his all into it, as well as financial backing. You know, it's, it's, it's awesome. Clamoring for a live sports events, entertainment events, uh, on many, many networks and what have you, than never before. And there are many differences as well in terms of the play uh, and that we'll be presenting, a more innovative, a more, I think, exciting.
exciting to play. Uh, and kickoff, of course, is going to be as announced by the governor. Uh, kickoff is going to be uh, on the February 8th and 9th, that weekend following the Super Bowl uh, of 2020. We're really looking forward to uh, once again establishing very exciting, very exciting, innovative uh, form of football that, quite frankly, you've never seen before. Because so much has changed in terms of uh, the use of digital, social media that even exist uh, 20 years ago, in ways of distributing and in ways of interest uh, in terms of the various devices, uh, which were not there either. But what has not changed is the love of football. That has not changed. And uh, with that in mind, I'd like to introduce you to a man who loves football, uh, perhaps more than anyone else has ever known. He is the man who's going to bring all of this to life. He is a man of impeccable integrity, uh, both as a player as well as an executive. And he is the commissioner of the XFL, Mr. Oliver Luck. Okay, so this is the main guy. Thank you, Vince. Uh, good afternoon. It's great to be here with all of you on this truly momentous day in the launch of the new XFL. As you all very well know, Vince announced that the XFL would be seeking input from key stakeholders and fans, and together we'd reimagine. <coughs> we believe launching in February Excuse me. 20 gives us the time we need to get the game, the fan experience, and our partnerships right, and we believe we are well on our way. So you may ask yourself, what is football reimagined? It's a game that's fast-paced, high-octane, up-tempo, with a great rhythm, a great flow, with fewer stoppages in play. Or, as you may have heard us say, less stall and more ball. It's a game where great attention is paid to player health and safety. It's a game that's fan-centric, innovative, and technologically advanced with real-time fan engagement. The NFL and college football are as popular today as they've ever been, with tens of millions of fans engaging each and every week. And our research indicates that fans want more football, and we intend to provide it to them. The XFL wants to complement fall football. We'll run a professional league delivering football each and every spring starting in February of 2020. In fact, in the true spirit of reimagining the game, we are having productive meetings and conversations with the National Football League and other professional football leagues, as well as former players, coaches, and officials. Today, I have the pleasure of taking you through some highlights and upcoming plans capped off by our city and stadium announcements. Let's start with some of the ways we are working to truly reimagine football. This is going to be interesting, guys. a few weeks of me joining the XFL, Very we interesting. assembled what we called our Football Reimagined Committee. This team was comprised of current and former players, coaches, guys like Doug Flutie, John Fox, Jim Caldwell. We had tech experts, media executives, medical professionals, and other representatives of various constituent groups. We held a series of meetings and discussed ways we could take the game that we all love and modify it, tweak it enough so that it's familiar yet distinctive. We spent time sharing our ideas, as well as those that have been sent to us by fans, which helped us focus on four major areas. The first is speed, driven by a shorter play clock, technical innovation, and a modified officiating protocol. We will create a quality game that's crisp, fast-paced, and can be played in under three hours. Next is our plan to increase meaningful on-field action by considering changes to rules governing punts, punt, punt returns, kickoffs, extra points, and the play clock. We also plan to create more in-game rhythm and more in-game flow. This is both important for coaches and players as well as for fans. This will be accomplished by limiting game play timeouts, TV timeouts, and simplifying the rules so there are fewer interruptions. And of course, improving player safety is a top priority of ours. We are establishing an extensive health and wellness program based on input from an accomplished medical professional board with folks who are experts in the area of neuroscience and orthopedics and mental health. Taking these focus areas and ideas and given the gift of time from Vince, we can conceptualize our new brand of football and actually test it out. In fact, at this very moment, our football operations team is in Mississippi working with the National Junior College Athletic Association and a couple of their member schools, Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College and Pearl River Community College. It's our first live 
research and development session where we're actually testing out our ideas. We call it theses testing. We will then re-engage our committee to share and discuss the results as we continue to fine tune our rule book. We also plan to continue to test out some of our ideas and our theses in uh, Texas beginning this spring uh, with the Spring League. We are committed to listening to our fans. In fact, we have connected directly with thousands of fans across the U.S. through surveys, through focus groups, and regularly monitor their suggestions and their feedback via social media. Some of our best ideas so far have come from them. As Vince mentioned months ago, the, the XFL will be fan-centric, will be family-friendly, a good, solid, in-game stadium experience. We want the XFL to be affordable for families, to truly enjoy a game and everything about it that comes along with that game and that game day experience. We're working closely with our venue partners to offer ticket prices that are significantly lower than the major sports leagues in the U.S. today. We are developing programs that will give our fans access to players and coaches, which we feel will be critical to making the game day experience even more exciting for them. Speaking of access, a very important word in the XFL, we're developing a state-of-the-art XFL app that will be the hub for the XFL with dedicated video, news scores, and ways for fans to stay connected to their favorite teams, their favorite players, and to each other. The health and wellness of our players, as I mentioned, is the top priority. The players are the league's human capital, obviously. Without them, we have nothing. We are committed to establishing a health and wellness program that meets the needs of today's athletes, including this advisory board that I had mentioned with world-renowned medical experts. In addition, we're doing everything possible to keep our players safe through our relationships with two of the country's leading sports risk and insurance companies. First of all, the Berkeley Group, as well as the Fairley Group. For over two decades, Berkeley has insured more professional sports leagues and teams than any other U.S. insurer and has proven itself to be the undisputed industry leader in providing coverage to. They're definitely doing things the right way, man. This is, this is for longevity now. I think 20 years ago it wasn't. I think they probably had one year of, of financial backing and, and that was it. One year of planning and that was it. Uh, Vince McMahon mentioned in the first part that the financial backers are for, for long term. You know, they, they, they obviously see, uh, they, they see the product, they see how, how it could, they obviously see the product, they see the need. You know, if fans really are asking for more football, then like you said, give it to them. Please. The Fairley Group is the leading risk consulting firm in the sports and entertainment industry. They are partners with virtually every major league in the U.S. and work daily with hundreds of professional sports teams across a broad array of risk and player safety issues. To ensure player health and wellness and fair on-field competition, the XFL will test for performance-enhancing substances. Oh! In regards to player compensation... Oh! Oh! Did you just hear that, guys? Did you just hear that? It will test for performance enhancing substances. Who knows how strict the testing is going to be, but I'll tell you right now, I've never taken anything and I won't. So I'm right there. Of the same budget for player salaries, and we'll be offering very competitive salaries for all of our players. Let me share a couple of updates on our hiring and staffing. We made a number of key hires recently, including former Buffalo Bills general manager Doug Whaley. Doug will be our senior vice president of football operations. Prior to Doug, to Doug joining the Bills, he worked for many years for both the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Seattle Seahawks. We've also hired Roxanne Kozarski as our general counsel, former general counsel of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Roxanne spent many years working uh, with the LA Raiders and Oakland Raiders in their legal department. We have announced a partnership with Optimum Scouting, a group long known for uncovering hidden player talent, just the kind of players that we intend to sign, and we've begun communicating on a very regular basis with the player agent community. We are what was that? That's, that's, a, that's a, a, an interesting point. Hidden player talent, just to catch up with Optimum Scouting. Optimum Scouting. Optimum Scouting. Well, I'm going to have to, I'm definitely going to have to have a look at them. Optimum scouting. I might need to send them a little message. Like, seriously. Subject. Possible 
XFL player. <laughs> I'll work it out later, but I am going to send them a message. And I'm going to word it absolutely perfectly and tell them exactly what I'm about, exactly what this YouTube channel is about, exactly what I intend to achieve, and see what they say. Why the fuck not? Why not, guys? Just the kind of players that we intend to sign, and we've begun communicating on a very regular basis with the player agent community. We are well on our way to identifying our team presidents, who will guide the business side of their respective teams, as well as our head coaches, who will also serve as each team's general manager. We plan to start filling these positions in the first quarter of 2019, same time frame for us signing quarterbacks and other impact players, first quarter of 2019. I'm frequently asked, Oliver, where will our players come from? I believe that there's an enormously big player pool from which we plan to recruit our players. Where are your players going to come from, mate? Tell me. Tell me right now. We're we'll looking for the best players and coaches available who want to be part of something ambitious, exciting, and new, and who recognize that the XFL is built to succeed long term. The vast majority will have college and, of course, NFL experience. College football, in my mind, is turning out better players than ever before. They're better. They said the vast majority will have college and NFL experience. Okay. Well, it's only a majority. There's still players that they would look at that haven't. Coached, they're in better shape than in years past. Nutrition, strength and conditioning coaches, performance experts, unbelievable facilities, all have led to an incredibly high quality of the college player. And speaking of high quality players, I mentioned Doug Flutie earlier, who's been working with our football reimagined group. Doug is the type of player, someone that had immense talent but was overlooked for a number of reasons, that we are looking for in the NFL. Doug's the kind of player that would survive and thrive in our league. Hundreds of players are cut every year from NFL teams. Yeah, they, they are. They exactly are. Yeah, they, they certainly are. There's going to be... There's going to be a freaking... There's going to be a huge pool of players that have played one, two, three, even five years experience in the, in the NFL. And yet, they're not contracted. And they're looking to play professional football, and this would be right up their alley. So really, I don't have a fucking shot. So really, when you think about it, I don't really have a chance. Hmm. <laughs> it's a big cut down date. I think this past year over 900 players were released from NFL rosters and they cut down from 90 to 53. We plan to invite those players to try out for the XFL. Right. When are the tryouts? We're going to scout, we're going to run mini camps, we're going to have local tryouts, we're going to hold an XFL draft, as well as a supplemental draft, the first of which will take place in the summer, early fall of 2019. In terms of gambling, gaming, we're watching the development, as many are, of sports gaming in the U.S. very closely. And as a proponent, uh, we, we are a proponent of giving fans a legal and a safe way to participate. Like other sports properties, we will look at models that ensure integrity, that's very important to us, and create opportunities to drive revenue. A number of states, as many folks know, have legalized gambling, like here in the great state of New Jersey, and we expect that by the time we launch in February of 2020, that legalized gambling will be available in many more states. The timing, I believe, continues to be in our side. Let me share a tidbit about our media partnerships. It's been a very important area of focus for us, obviously. We're very excited about the meaningful and deep conversations we've had with all of the major media players about our distribution plans. We are confident that our games will be widely available on multiple platforms, giving us an incredible level of exposure come launch date in February of 2020. And we will have exciting news to share with you all very soon about the specifics. Finally, today, we are thrilled to make a major announcement of the cities and the venues that our inaugural eight XFL teams will call home. I'm just going to get my, my phone out here, I'm just going to make a quick quick Instagram post just to show the peeps that I am interested in the XFL and I'm following it, so we will do that right now, we'll just do a quick, quick, uh, quick story here. Finally today, we are thrilled to make a major announcement of the cities and the venues that our inaugural eight XFL teams will call home when we launch in February of 2020. 
This past spring, more than 30 cities expressed interest in securing one of the XFL's inaugural eight teams. In the months between then and now, we've had discussions with many of those markets, and we've determined where our teams will call home based on a number of very important factors. But it's important to note, right off the bat, that we weren't just looking to come in and rent a building. That's easy, that's simple. Our goal was to establish a spirit of true partnership and build an organization and a year-round presence that makes these communities proud. We're confident we're awarding our teams to cities and venues that will help us achieve this goal. So with that, it's time to share with you our eight inaugural host cities and venues for the XFL in February of 2020. Clearly, based on all that I've mentioned, the XFL is thinking big, and Vince likes to think big. And when you think of world-class venues, there are none bigger than the one that we are in right now, MetLife Stadium. Of course, as was mentioned, uh, the governor plays host to two NFL franchises, world-class concerts, and a global phenomenon that many of you have heard of, which of course is WrestleMania uh, in April of 20, back in April, that, back in 2013, and of course returning in April uh, of next year. Sports fans here are zealous, they're knowledgeable, they're passionate, they love their football. So we are very excited to award a team to New York and have them play right here at MetLife Stadium. And I'm thrilled to welcome Ron Vandeveen, President and CEO of MetLife, to the stage. Ron? selecting MetLife Stadium as a venue for the XFL. On behalf of MetLife Stadium, I'd like to welcome everybody here today, especially all the cities and venues that travel from far away. As you know, it takes a lot of people to put, to, to put together a successful bid. Um, I'd like to thank Governor Murphy. I'd like to thank Senator Paul Sarlo. I'd like to thank Jim Kirkos, President and CEO of the Meadowlands Regional Chamber of Commerce. I'd like to thank Vincent Prieto, President and CEO of the New Jersey Sports and Exposition Authority, and the team at MetLife Stadium. It really was a true team effort, and they really worked together to put this event. Thank you. Um, as you may or may not know, MetLife Stadium, where we hold the world's biggest events on the world's biggest stage, is entering its 10th year anniversary next year. We'll, we'll start that celebration, as everyone said, with WrestleMania on April 7th, 2019, and end it with the first season of the XFL. I've personally had the pleasure of working with Vince and the WWE team for over 20 years, and we look forward to continuing that successful partnership for, with the XFL for years to come. Thank you. Is that it? <laughs> The next XFL team will play at a venue that is part of a major sports and entertainment complex that hosts both the National Football League and a Major League Baseball franchise. Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex is a hotbed of sports, and we couldn't be more excited to bring the XFL team to Dallas. The XFL will be the first tenant at Globe Life Park in Arlington, Texas. Really? And I'm pleased to welcome Neil Liebman, co-owner and chief operating officer of the Texas Rangers. Big, big. Vince Oliver, on behalf of the Texas Rangers, we are honored to be part of your inaugural season. As you know, Arlington, Texas is becoming one of the top sports and entertainment destinations in the Southwest. The addition of XFL will add to the year-round excitement for fans in Arlington, the Dallas Metroplex, and all of North Texas. Thank you to Vince McMahon and Oliver Luck for selecting Globe Life Park in Arlington as home to the XFL. 
when the Rangers in the city of Arlington agreed to build a new ballpark for a much needed retractable roof. The Rangers made an absolute commitment that Globe Life Park would remain as a cornerstone of the entertainment district. We have been working diligently over the last couple of years finding the best solutions for repurposing the beautiful facility that we call Globe Life Park. That process is continuing, but we are very excited to be partnering with the XFL as our first tenant of Globe Life Park. What is the, oh, no, we'll keep that one there. What is the Texas Rangers? Is that a baseball team? Uh, yes, yes it is. I want to recognize Mayor Jeff Williams, City Manager Trey Yelverton, Bureau President Ron Price of the City of Arlington for their assistance in making this day a reality. It's a great day in Arlington, Texas, and thank you. Staying in the Lone Star State, next up is Houston, a town near and dear to me personally, as well as to ardent football fans with deep ties to the game. In Houston, we will take the field at the University of Houston's TD ECU Stadium. And I am thrilled to welcome my friend Janice Berg, president of the Houston Sports Authority. Janice. It's exciting, isn't it? It's fucking exciting, man. Hey, well, everyone knows that Texas is a big state with huge, avid football fans, so Houston is thrilled to be in the mix. We couldn't have a better partner in the University of Houston. They have been passionate about this from the onset of the bid, and so it's really exciting to have them here today in the audience to hear this news with us. I know that in Houston we are mourning the loss of an iconic man today. He was a huge sports fan. We will miss him dearly, but I can't help but think he's looking down from heaven and he's pleased to hear this news. So on behalf of the city of Houston, the fourth largest city in the United States, Harris County, the third largest, and the University of Houston, we thank you for having confidence in us and for allowing us to be called home. We take the jersey back home with pride and are excited to, to let everyone know. Thank you. Next, we move west to what is California's football-rich Southland. We believe the XFL and its high-octane brand of football will be welcomed by fans in Los Angeles. And it's with much pride we welcome the Stub Hub Center in Carson to the family. So, New York, Dallas, Houston, no, yeah, New York, Dallas, Dallas, Texas. So, Dallas and Houston are in the same state, right? So, New York. Well, New Jersey, sorry. New Jersey, Dallas, Texas, LA. We're, pl we're pl pleased to have Katie Pandolfo, General Manager of StubHub Center today, with the, here with us today. Katie, please come on up. I would love to check out LA, man. I really would. StubHub Center. StubHub. Good afternoon, uh, and thank you. And on behalf of AEG, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Vince, the entire WWE organization, for your partnership and for consistently bringing amazing content to all of our stadiums and arenas uh, across the globe. Uh, LA has seen two new football the last few years. And it's one thing that I've learned is that Los Angeles has some of the most amazing and passionate fans. 
and there is no better place to watch a football game than at the StubHub Center. So we are excited and honored. I want to thank Vince and for Oliver for choosing the StubHub Center, uh, and we cannot wait to welcome the XFL in 2020. Thank you. Short and sweet. And now to the heartland of America. We are thrilled to share that our next XFL host city has been awarded to St. Louis. Just as the Gateway Arch in St. Louis represents opportunity and promise to many, the XFL symbolizes the opportunity and promise of football reimagined and will return the game to a passionate fan base left behind. We're incredibly fortunate to have a team set to play at the Dome at America Center and can't wait to deliver football once again to fans in St. Louis. I'd like to ask Kitty Ratcliffe, President of Explore St. Louis, and Andrew Leonard, Chairman of the Board of Explore St. Louis, to come on up. Thank you so much, Commissioner Luck. With me here today is Chairman of our Board, Explore St. Louis, Andrew Leonard, and also in the audience today, the General Manager of America Center Convention Complex, Matthew Dewey, also Dan Gargan, Vice President and Managing Director, and Mark Lillibridge, both with Lou Fuse Athletics. On behalf of all of them, our team in St. Louis, uh, our staff, thank our God looks funny. of our Board, I want to say thank you to Mr. McMahon. I want to say thank you to, to Commissioner Locke. I don't, know, I don't know why. I don't know why. But he reminds me of the lion off of The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> uh, uh, why does he remind me of the lion? It's, it's the face and it's the eyes. I'm sorry. Parama, parama. You watch. You look. Join you here today for this announcement. And although she could not be here with us today... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, we're going to have to do this. <laughs> there he is. Oh my god, why are you asking me to freaking log in? I don't want to log into nothing. Yeah, it's this one. It's this one. Have a look. <laughs> is it? <laughs> I don't know if it is. And due to commitments in Louis last night, I also bring greetings <laughs> and thanks from the mayor of the city of St. Louis, Lyda Person. We are all excited about the opportunity to bring professional football oh, back to St. Louis and funny. to the Dome at America Center. St. Louis is a community with world-class institutions, enormous green spaces outdoor recreation, an amazing food scene, and an overall great quality of life. But central to its core is its passion of the citizens for sports, demonstrated year after year in its embrace of its beloved teams and also its celebration of major sporting events like the recent PGA Championship in August, which set records for attendance. Given the history that Vince McMahon and his team have in producing high profile, high energy and engaging events. We believe that St. Louisans will take to this new brand of reimagined football as much as they have taken to, well, every W. <sighs> event that's ever been held in St. Louis. The addition to this team is very exciting for our team. It's also exciting for thousands of hospitality workers in the hospitality industry that depend on the Dome at America Center and the entire America Center Convention Complex <laughs> to help drive economic development and jobs for our community. Our St. Louis team looks forward to being a part of the creation of this new adventure, <laughs> along with the seven other cities, 
We look forward to working with the XFL to prepare for <laughs> St. Louis team. Oh. Thank you very much. Oh. Bye. Oh, mate. Sorry, I didn't even take notice of that. St. Louis. All right. Next, we head up to the great northwest to welcome <laughs> Seattle to the XFL. You know that guy that was standing there? If he had have opened his eyes like that and gone like that picture, it would have looked exactly the same, I can Football tell. Football fans of the Emerald City have long had a reputation of being loud, really loud. And it's that energy and enthusiasm enthusiasm that convinced us that an XFL team will thrive in the Pacific Northwest at Century Link Field. It's not Kansas, is it? And we're excited to have Ralph Morton, Executive Director of the Seattle Sports Commission, with us here today. Ralph? Seattle. Seattle, I'd like to welcome Vince Oliver and the XFL to the Pacific Northwest. Seattle is known for breathtaking scenery, space needles, seafood, wine, craft beer, and of course a lot of coffee. We have innovative companies that change the way we live our lives, from Microsoft, Amazon, Boeing, and Starbucks. But first, we are a passionate sports town. We are loyal, loud, and proud of our teams. We fill stadiums and make it hard on our opponents. And more importantly, we are die-hard football fans. We are excited to welcome the XFL to Century League Field, one of the finest stadiums in the country. We look forward to partnering with all these other amazing cities to help grow the XFL, and of course, and hopefully, winning the inaugural XFL championship for Seattle. Thank you. Hmm. It's the first one that said that. Now we head southeast to the Sunshine State and to our next host location, Tampa Bay. The XFL is very excited to become part of the Sun Soap community. And we'll call Florida Raymond James Stadium home when we kick off in February of 2020. This venue has become synonymous with hosting world-class football events, hosting four Super Bowls with a fifth on its way. And I'd like to welcome Hillsborough County Commissioner Ken Hagen to the stage. Ken? Florida. I'd love to go there too. Raymond James Stadium, the Tampa Sports Authority, and the entire Tampa Bay community. I'd like to thank the XFL for selecting us as home from one of their eight inaugural teams. You could not have selected a community that is more football-centric, with Tampa Bay being a proven winner in hosting uh, major sporting events and sports franchises. Football has a long, rich history at Raymond James Stadium. We hosted the 2017 College Football Playoff National Championship and we'll be hosting our fifth Super Bowl in 2021. We are home to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and South Florida Bulls, two college bowl games with the Outback Bowl and the, and the Bad Boy Mowers Gasparilla Bowl, and our area is hosting our third NCAA Women's Final Four in 2019, have hosted two NCAA Frozen Four championships, numerous rounds of the NCAA Men's uh, Basketball Tournament, 2018 NHL All-Star Game, in addition to many other major sporting events. That's why in Tampa Bay we say it's game day every day. And we could not be more excited to be working with the XFL to make Tampa Bay the benchmark franchise for the league in 2020. Thank you Mr. McMahon and Commissioner Luck for this exciting opportunity. We are thrilled to be a part of this movement. See, every, see, I knew it was weird. As as they walk off, every single person has shake. Uh, every single person has shaken this guy's hand. 
except for the first guy. He just walked completely past him. He didn't do nothing. <laughs> can we find it? Can we find it? I think we can. Have a look at this. Have a look at this. Watch this. Washington. One thing I have gotten is that every single state believes they're the sports capital of the US. Don't they? So, so, so which is? That's the question. Who's going to win the first year? That's it. It's done. There you have it. New York, Dallas, Houston, Los Angeles, St. Louis, Seattle, Tampa Bay, and Washington, D.C. Our lineup when we kick off in February of 2020. Combined, these markets comprise nearly a quarter of the nation's population, where we believe a good many of the 45 million I hate it when the football season ends fans call home. I'm also proud to announce that beginning today, fans can go to XFL.com to put down a deposit for season tickets, which will provide them with early access to select their seats and to purchase season tickets before they go on sale to the general public. In the coming months, you're hiring team presidents, head coaches, announcing team names, logos, colors, and most importantly, signing players. Mm. The quality of football is our number one priority, and we're doing everything possible to get that right, and we will. The game will be fast-paced, it'll be affordable, family-friendly, interactive, as technologically advanced as possible, and played at eight fantastic venues in eight incredible cities. The XFL is being built for fans and built to last. Thank you all for coming and for tuning in online. We appreciate it. Thanks very much. The movement has started. The future is near. Here we go. New, lead, new teams, a new story starts here. Where a nation begin with big nose, no bounds. We're hot, we'll be hotter. Time to turn up this sound. We glamour, we script, where empires are grown. Where great things launch, and the game returns home. Eight hungry cities, more or less of the same. We're doing it different, reimagining the game. This is Dallas, Tampa, St. Louis, NYC. It's Seattle, Houston, LA, and DC. It's happening, get ready, time to spring, time to yell. This is football, we born. This is the XFL. <laughs> Woo! The XFL, man. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, man, I am excited. I'm very excited for this. Uh, as a fan, you know, wanting to watch it. I feel like the thing that's the most exciting for me is, for one, the, the small rule changes to make it faster and, and quicker, better for the fan to watch. I want to know how they're going to do that. But also, I want to know the, te like the, the, uh, the technology side of it. I want to know how that 
that fan interaction, you know, I want to know how they're going to improve it. They said that it's going to be the most interactive experience possible. You know, they're going to go behind the scenes. They're going to give access that's never been, never been seen, never been seen before. Access to players and coaches, and and uh, I'm excited for that. I mean, it's going to be through social media. It's probably going to be like live streaming for the game. You know, like they might they might have vlogs. They might have uh, YouTube channels for the players, coaches teams but I don't know I'm gonna be I'm gonna be watching it though whatever happens so that's it it was uh, the XFL most recent press conference and uh, there's a lot to think about but we do know that the eight teams if I can remember the eight cities sorry are New Jersey or New York Te uh, Houston no New, New York Dallas Texas no fuck New York, Dallas, Houston, St. Louis, Seattle, Washington, and I can't remember the other one. Anyways, all good. If you have enjoyed this video, hit the like button. No, it's gone for ages. It's probably gone for like 50 minutes. If you have enjoyed it, hit the like button. If you want to subscribe, please do. And I'll see you back here very soon. I really hope you enjoyed it. I did. And uh, that guy definitely looked like the lion from Wizard of Oz. Don't tell me he didn't, alright?